All right, it's now 8.30, and good Friday morning. Welcome to the WLBB Community Voice here on News Talk 1330, FM 106.3, streaming live online at Newstalk1330.com. And this morning, we are on the News Talk 1330 WLBB Facebook page. So uh, go ahead and visit our Facebook page and uh, send any questions or comments you have for our program this morning. We'll take a look at those throughout uh, the show. I'm Colin Worthington. Finally get to back get to be back on the show. Haven't been on here for about, uh, I don't think I've been on for like 10 days. No, maybe it was last Friday I was on, but uh, this whole week, I mean, Steve and Josh and Sarah Claudia hogging the program. I don't think, I get to, I don't think I'm on next week either until on Friday, but, uh, so I will treasure this moment uh, on the program. Also, it is uh, the Friday before a long Labor Day weekend, so looking forward to that. We got uh, college football officially really kicking off on Saturday. Our guest this morning, Ernie Reynolds, District 5 Commissioner for uh, Carroll County. Ernie, good morning. Good morning, Colin. You and I, had, uh, we had talked earlier this week about um, a proposal you were going to bring forth, and uh, and that's what got me to want to bring you on the show, because yeah. did a little story on it for Thursday, just didn't think, I thought there were some details that you wanted to touch on a little bit more and have the opportunity to hear. Um, and this program will also talk about the uh, the millage rate, which was approved on Tuesday, and uh, and a couple of other good fun things. Yeah, good. And, uh, yeah, we'll get through that on the show again. Newstalk 1330 Facebook page for your questions and your comments. Well, first of all, let me go ahead and uh, we'll revisit the story that we did yesterday because this was the big topic you and I wanted to talk about. Uh, Carroll County's Dist- District 5 Commissioner Ernie Reynolds asking fellow commissioners to consider an ordinance change that he says would close a current loophole and disallow developers from splitting agriculturally zoned property more than four times in a two-week period. Uh, Reynolds says that change would help ensure that the majority of District 5 remains rural, peaceful, uncluttered, and uncongested. Tell us how he, how he got to this um, this idea and, and the need um, that you hope that this ordinance change will All right. fix. Good. Thank you, Colin. Yes, Thank sir. you for, for having me. Uh, I'm glad to get a chance to explain my uh, situation and stance. Uh, I guess I would like to – well, let me first say uh, – I'm glad we were able to roll back uh, a, a partial rollback of the millage rate. Uh, we try to take a very uh, frugal approach to the budget, so uh, I'm I'm glad for that and uh, glad that we could save taxpayers a, a little bit of money versus uh, having the millage rate remain the same. So well, you guys anyway. snuck up on us with that. We, I mean, you know, for the whole time, I mean, you have to put out that uh, announcement that uh, the county intends to. You know, raise taxes, right. uh, even by maintaining the millage rate because of all right. the uh, the growth and Value the reassessments. Mm-hmm. Um, so even maintaining the millage rate this year would have brought in, I think, about $1.6 million. And that's mm-hmm. what that's what you guys had to advertise, you had to promote. Yeah. But then on Tuesday, you guys said, hey, we'll do a partial rollback. Uh, yeah. yeah. How did that come about? I mean, I, did you guys all know that Clint was going to propose that beforehand or did um, – Well, no. I mean, we had discussed it and uh, we we looked at our budget and said, I, I think we can – get by with reducing it a little mm-hmm. so uh you know glad to do that always glad to to save a little bit where we can and uh that's all anyway and just, talking to clint earlier this week i mean he said you know it gives a little break uh, you know to, right it could have got more could have taken more from taxpayers and property owners but it's right. give them a little bit of break and uh, it still allows you to pay for all the employees and, and things that are, right. that are in the budget so right yeah, so on this uh, thing about agricultural land, uh, uh, I was asked by my constituents who were very concerned to look into this and please do something so that we could uh, preserve and and put a little bit of a uh, lid on, I guess, unfettered development. But uh, I want to say three things that that. I am not. So, uh, first of all, it is not my agenda. Uh, I didn't come into office because of an agenda. I came in to help people. I came in to help people with problems with government and help them uh, navigate through those problems and resolve those problems. That's what I'm doing. I I didn't come in to uh, necessarily preserve agriculture or get on the backs of developers. That that's not my agenda at all. Period. This agenda is my constituents' agenda. I'm merely here as their representative, and as their representative, if they ask me to do something and they are in the majority, then I feel I need to accurately represent them. Well, isn't that preserving agriculture? I mean, wasn't I, mean, I think everybody who runs for District 5, that's, that's part of well, the message when they're running it, and to say, hey, that's, that's you know, right. preserve our way of life. The it is, because it is 
an agricultural community. Mm-hmm. It's it's quiet, it's peaceful, it's cattle raising and uh, poultry farms and that kind of thing. And and as far as I know, from what I'm hearing, uh, we want it largely to remain that way. And to as many folks say not become another douglas county i'm i'm here to support that because i i share that view but i don't have an agenda i my agenda is the agenda of the people i represent so uh another thing i am not is i am not against development i want good solid managed development uh there are uh, several houses going up just down the road here uh, off of 16 the mcdowell's uh, are, are building those i have no complaints i uh, have received no complaints about that uh, nice good houses i i support the mcdowell's in that and and their development uh ron dupree up uh, uh north of hoitsburg on banning road and so on putting in uh, nice houses there i have gotten no complaints about that i don't have a problem with that at all because my constituents don't so i'm i'm not uh, here against development i'm here to merely represent the people who put me in office and i feel that's my charge Uh, i'm also not for government regulation and last night you might have heard some uh additional information about that at our work session but uh, as i said then i am opposed to government regulation i don't want it but when big business or big money overruns the peasant or the populace uh then government has to stick up and and disallow big money or big business from overrunning the will of the people and that's all i'm trying to do here is to stick up for my uh, constituents in fact i said last night you might remember when the community development office came up with a bunch of uh, additional regulations of what people could and could not do as far as running a business from their home when those ordinances were proposed i adamantly opposed those entirely because i am not for people being told what they can and cannot do out of their homes as far as running businesses so uh that does go back to question you know when you were running for office and anybody in district five actually any commissioner over the last two three years i mean a question i'm always asking is when is it okay to tell somebody what they can do with their own property right well it's only okay when when the masses come to their representative and say help this is hindering us in some fashion when they feel like and, they and, and they feel like that. they need help yeah. with that and uh just like you know in uh flint michigan i mentioned this yesterday you know they had all the problems with the the poisoning uh, chemical in their water lead and whatever well did big business uh, come in and say oh uh, we uh acknowledge that and and we're going to fix it for you no government had to step in and for the good of the people help with that situation and i'll just be candid i know i i said last night uh, i don't uh, like to wear a seatbelt. i i do but i don't like government being told uh government telling me that i have to wear a seatbelt. but uh so i'm i'm not for government regulation but as i said also uh you know, ninety percent of uh, the people uh, support uh, this and and what I'm trying to do, and I'll explain that <laughs> what I'm trying to do in a minute. But uh, as far as government regulation, and and some people say, well, this is America, and uh, just get out of the way and let us do what we want with with everything. Well, if if we did that, if you want to take that to an extreme, and and we didn't stand up for the will of the people and uh, against big business or uh, things that would uh, just push them over, then you would have a situation like i bought my car you bought your car with our own money we pay taxes to maintain the county roads so down lowell road i ought to be able to go 140 miles an hour if i want to go 140 miles an hour it's my car it's my tax money well we have government in place however to say no we're funding sheriffs and police and highway patrol and so on to regulate and make sure that people don't get run over so uh, that's that's the only time that uh, government needs to 
intervene uh aside from that i'm yeah right i i don't need to be here uh but the people have asked me in this situation to come forth and to do something about it what they uh, have asked me to do something about is is this they approached me that uh there was uh 500 and some acres south of Rootville, uh, between Needmore and uh, Attaway Roads down there. And uh, this isn't the first time that I've gotten this type of complaint, but it is the first time that I've heard this much. So I looked into it, and uh, there were 500 and some acres down there. And they were, uh, from what information I got, uh, the developer was proposing to cut it up all kinds of different ways, uh, like, I don't know, 50, 60 tracks or whatever, and just just botch up uh, that area. And people were concerned that it was going to change the, the aura of that area. So... Uh, I looked into it, and I don't know if you can see it or not, but this is this is a, a visual of uh, of what how it was going to be uh, cut up. Uh, anyway, uh, if you can see that, fine. If not, I can give you copies. But uh, all kinds of dogleg tracks of property, and anyway, uh, improper road frontage, and so on. But anyway, uh, what was happening is that type of thing being put in and forced upon uh that area and it would have resulted in you know a 100 200 additional homes whether they be manufactured or stick built or whatever uh and so i looked into it and i said well how can this be because i i thought that we had regulation that said agricultural zone property cannot be split more than four times and that's why I hadn't bothered about it before because I thought, well, no worries. We have that in place, and we won't allow something in agriculture to be split more than four times. But is that in place to prevent subdivisions? I mean, is that the sole intent of that, to present uh, bigger clusters of homes? Well, I, I really don't know how that got there, but I would guess, uh, yes, it's it's so that you can't split it 20 times and, and put 20 homes in there all of a sudden. So uh, – if you can only split an agricultural tract four times, and by the way, you know I'm in the same boat as as the rest of the people around there. I have over 100 acres, and uh, I'm restricted to to that, and and so on. So when I learned that, I went to community development, and who regulates that, and I said, how can such a proposal of putting in a hundred, two hundred homes and splitting up things a uh, hundred times or fifty times or whatever. How can that take place in agriculture? And they said, "Oh, I, that's easy. Uh, a developer can come in on Monday and split it four times, and then on Tuesday and split it four more times, and then on Wednesday and split it four more times. And so, in a matter of a week or two, they can have thirty, forty, fifty uh, tracks." Uh, out of one parcel because there's no time restriction on how often you can split it and i said well that that just makes the whole concept then a farce i mean if we have something on the books that says thou shalt not split it more than four times but you can split it four times an hour then we either need to put in in our ordinance that you can split it four times an hour or no more than four times every minute or whatever and just be honest with people and, and stop the facade or we need to take it off the books and say you can split it period if you want to split it four times or 24 times or 94 times have at it and the key, key to your proposal is you know let's make this uh, two years and yeah. in waiting two years i mean what do you, what does that do well it it stems the tide of erratic uh development and congestion so um i I went to the community development director and uh, we talked about it and and thought that it would be uh, proper to go to the county attorney and we went to the county attorney and said what could be done he reviewed other counties and that kind of thing and found that uh, several other counties had uh, uh, things in place where they were limiting uh, the time period between those splits so you can split it four times 
and then you have to wait a two-year period before you can split it four times again so so the two-year time limit came from just what is typical in several other counties and we hadn't implemented that so we felt collectively that that was uh, a proper thing to add so that we wouldn't have this type of situation is there any kind of uh, i guess interest behind that that maybe the developers will get tired after two years they don't want to invest their money in something that'll take them 10 years to complete here's the deal what what a developer is doing when he splits it four times on monday and four more on tuesday and wednesday and thursday and so on to get 50 lots out of 100 acres then what what he's doing is skirting the subdivision requirements that are in place so actually he's walking away with all the profits and he or she and is not complying then with our subdivision regulations because he's not putting in streets or having to invest any of his money in such a subdivision now that's fine if you have you know six thousand feet of road frontage and you put four acre lots on the road frontage and you don't have to put another street in but when you dog leg and meander through and split up a property like uh, the visual is here i mean it, it's a totally different story so uh, that's what uh, i'm trying to address so yes the four year uh, the two year time limit between the four splits just addresses that situation and says if you want to put in more then go to our subdivision requirements and comply with that so um to avoid skirting those and doing what's proposed to be done uh, down south of Rootville. So, uh, but 90% of, of the people support uh, this. Uh, I've gotten uh, several emails and texts and phone calls, and of course on Facebook you can see the responses uh, where. Uh, they feel that something has to be done like this to stem the tide of the uh, erratic or or devastating uh, types of development well i need to take this spot right now to uh, to get our bills paid here and hear from our uh, sponsors time right now is 848 community voice is brought to you by tanner health system oak mountain academy when we come back i will um, i'm, I'm going to present uh, an idea uh, comment from somebody who was um, who was against this proposal And I'll point this out, and uh, we'll uh, talk about that after this break. Community Voice, coming back in just a minute. Health is a journey. It's making better choices, even when it's not easy. It's taking care of yourself and the people you love. At Tanner Health System, we're there for you with every step, with primary care, heart care, cancer care, women's care, orthopedics, surgical services, and so much more. We're dedicated to helping you live and feel your best. So let's get on that journey to help. You've got places to be for many years to come. Find us at Tanner.org. As a graduate of Oak Mountain Academy, I've found that my experience on the mountain prepared me beyond all expectations. As a junior at Auburn University, I approached my studies with great confidence thanks to what I learned at OMA. When I think back on my time on the mountain, I think of my teachers. Their genuine love and concern for me as a student was always evident. And now, as an adult, I still foster those relationships. I'm Carly Robinson, an Oak Mountain Academy alum. Visit oakmountain.us to see how you can offer your child an amazing opportunity to be a warrior. All right, 848. Welcome back to Community Voice, News Talk 1330, FM 106.3. I'm your host, Colin Worthington. My guest is District 5 Commissioner in Carroll County, Ernie Reynolds. Uh, that whole segment, we were talking about uh, a proposal that Ernie has out there. Hope you had a chance to uh, to listen to that and understand it. We, uh, If you did, if you missed it, you can go back and uh, watch it on the News Talk 1330 Facebook page, or it will be in podcast uh, later on after the program. You can go back and listen to uh, the whole thing. Now, you did post it, uh, your idea, to uh, your Facebook page, your, um, I, I believe, your County Commission Facebook page, and did get a lot of comments. I mean, uh, there was yeah. a lot of support, but there were about two or three people who uh, who didn't seem to support it as much. Uh, David McMahon said, right goal, wrong approach, or solution. It seems like this might possibly prevent folks from doing normal things with their land, like conveying small parcels to their kids for a home site, reorganizing tax parcels, creating a five-acre home site to separate it from the farmland, 
because a a residential mortgage lender generally will not lend on more than five acres. It says lots of unintended consequences and loss of freedoms here. If the problem is manufactured homes, why not just amend the ordinance to disallow manufactured homes in ag zones without either rezoning the property to uh, MH subdivision or obtaining a variance? Well, this isn't against uh, anybody. Uh, It is merely to preserve what my constituents want preserved as far as the uh uh thing about uh, passing land on to other generations and 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 splitting to give it to children and that kind of thing there's uh, intrafamily variance uh, that can be applied for and it is usually if not nearly always granted so uh i don't feel at all and and the county staff don't feel at all that it would be a problem uh to continue and and this would not interfere with that at all so if you have uh, six grandchildren for example and uh this uh, comes about and and it says you can only split it four times within two years uh then you simply apply for a variance that you can split it six times and and give each of the six grandchildren some of your property i mean so interfamily variance is the way around that as far as uh and, and I'm in the same boat. I mean, and I I empathize. I mean, I, I have uh, over 100 acres, and uh, I may not always be there. Uh, I mean, uh, as I said last night, I'm 64, and uh, maybe I'm at some point in time, I don't have any plans now, but would want to lessen the burden of taking care of that much property and uh, fencing and horses and so on and hooking up the bush hog and uh, so on as my uh, right knee meniscus tear gets worse but anyway uh, so I there may come a time in the future when I want less to take care of then what am I going to do uh, and then yes I'd be subject to the same restriction I, I want to split it uh, more than four times and oops the stupid uh, government got in the way and I I can't do it now well I'm I'm right there. I mean, I'm I'm not separated from this. I'm uh, subject to the same thing. So, uh, as far as manufactured homes, here here's the deal with with that in general. Whether or not we're talking about this ordinance, it takes about a, a value of about three hundred three hundred fifty thousand dollars in home value uh, to uh, pay taxes enough to support the county infrastructure for residents. So uh, sheriffs and uh, public safety protection and roads and schools and that kind of thing, when when you get uh, homes valued at uh, less than the average of uh, 300000 350000 then uh, actually others have to pay and supplant what you're not paying in so if if we add 200 manufactured homes and each of them is valued at 150,000 or 200,000 or whatever you can see that that creates quite a burden on the county because those people and their children and so on are going to be using the schools and the roads and the sheriff's office and the ambulances and so on and but they're not paying in enough to net the cost of what they're uh, getting from the county so that's the only thing we, we just have to watch and, and make sure that we don't have to raise taxes so watch out constituents because if you get a lot of manufactured homes in in district five uh then if they are valued at, at way less than the 300 350 mark taxes are are going to go up because they're not paying enough to cover the services that that's one thing about development uh and and with this type of thing you don't know i mean uh, splits were done up uh, hog liver road and they're uh, you know put in eight hundred thousand dollar homes that that's fine i'm not saying i'm just for eight hundred thousand dollar homes i have two children and and they want to also uh, buy property at some point in time and and build maybe a two hundred thousand dollar home or four hundred thousand dollar home or whatever and uh, so i'm i'm empathizing with that but at the same time when you allow developers to split things uh, 100 acres into 40 tracks you just you don't know what you're going to get and so we have to watch the the tax burden on the property ernie i gotta take our second break here before we wrap up the program and before i do let me ask you is this 
going to be a proposal going to be voted on on Tuesday, or has that been delayed for a month or so? Well, I have been blamed by some of wanting to push this through. So, uh, no, I have, uh, again, no agenda. I did not push it through. Uh, it merely was developed by our county attorney, and we put it on the agenda because this was the next meeting. I've already talked with Dwayne Hicks and uh, said, hey, Dwayne, if you want to get you know realty folks together, or I will, or whatever, and we talk about this and talk with developers, I'm fine with it. So we will most likely uh, uh, push it back and uh, uh, put 30 days in there to get with developers and that realty companies and so on so I'm, I'm fine with that i'm not trying to push anything through or cram anything down anybody's throat i'm, I'm merely trying to respond to my constituents all right we're gonna take that final break come back i guess with about three minutes hopefully hopefully we touch on something else for that last three minutes okay. all right community voice brought to you by tanner health system oak mountain academy we'll be back in a minute health is a journey it's making better choices even when it's not easy It's taking care of yourself and the people you love. At Tanner Health System, we're there for you with every step, with primary care, heart care, cancer care, women's care, orthopedics, surgical services, and so much more. We're dedicated to helping you live and feel your best. So let's get on that journey to health. You've got places to be for many years to come. Find us at Tanner.org. At Oak Mountain Academy, our daily schedule includes convocation, prayer, and the Pledge of Allegiance. By doing so, we build a family-like community where all students grow and flourish and personal faith is encouraged. Through community service and a historical approach to biblical study, our students are taught the value of the warrior way, honesty, respect, and responsibility. Oak Mountain Academy, we are a family creating legacies. To learn more, visit oakmountain.us. All right, 57. Welcome back to the WLBB Community Voice on News Talk 1330 FM 106.3. Colin Worthington, your host. My guest is Ernie Reynolds. He is District 5 Commissioner for uh, Carroll County. Again, got about two and a half minutes left in the program, and there really isn't anything. I mean, there's several things I did want to get into, but I, I don't think we can touch on those. So how about some closing comments? We'll, we'll, we'll close again talking about your proposed ordinance, uh, closing this out here for two minutes. Ernie, what, what do you want to say about it? Okay. Well, again, I'm, I'm open. Uh, I'm not – trying to push anything through so uh i I do want to say though that if what i'm hearing is true and and my constituents want to preserve farmland please please uh, take this seriously don't sit back uh, on your couch and and think that things will just uh, go away and and happen as they should uh, let your commissioners know. Let please call the commission chair or text or something. Correspond with uh, letting your representative in county government either your district commissioner and or the county commission chair, Michelle, uh, know what you want. And if you want to preserve farmland, uh, please uh, let that be known. Uh, there was another commissioner at uh, yesterday's meeting, and just to uh, put out there a, another thought that is, is floating, uh, that uh, we don't need to be concerned about preserving farmland, and not everyone wants to be a farmer, and and that is true uh and they mentioned uh, 35 percent of the children uh not wanting to continue with the family farm anyway and uh, and that's why uh, preserving farmland we have ag easement programs and and that's what we need to be concerned about so uh those those thoughts are out there that that really don't support uh maintaining a a rural uh atmosphere so uh particularly in district five watch out because it's just south of douglas county it's just uh, west of coweta county Uh, there will continue to be barrages on our quiet peaceful lifestyle Uh, the rock quarry is one such development as i'm trying to address uh, through this uh, ordinance change is another so we will keep being barraged by it there's a concrete recycling center uh, and or landfill uh, just outside of my district in district four Uh, so there that's uh, trying to come in so uh, we will have constant barrages like this please contact your your representative educational program ernie thank you for coming out this morning and talking about this everybody have a great weekend be safe out there for your three-day holiday time right now it's nine o'clock national news followed by your local news coming up here on news talk 1330 fm 106.3